Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and today we're going to be taking a look at this beefy bad boy right here. This is the Unify Industrial Switch. So this is a 10-port switch, ruggedized, made to go in walls. It's plenum rated. This is just an awesome, beefy switch. So let's go ahead and open it up and see what's inside the box uh, while I talk about the statistics here. So this is a 10-port switch. This has two standard gigabit ports and then eight ports of 802.3 AF, AT, or BT PoE, right? So it can do the 802.3, or what's called PoE++, across eight of these ports, uh, assuming that you're using the 450 watt power supply. Basically meaning that it can do 60 watts per port across eight ports, which is pretty amazing. So on the side here, we have a power cable. Looks like it. Oh, this thing's heavy. So that's it. Power cable and switch. Wow. Oh, the front is even like covered up. It's got this like cool, like ubiquity, like sticker on the front. All right, let's go ahead and unveil it. All right, look at that. Huh. Get out of here. So look at that big Ubiquity logo right on the front. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like right, the big Ubiquity U is right up there. On the back, we just have a power adapter or sort of the uh, standard uh, Molex power cable goes in there. And then wow, each one of these ports is covered up too. Yeah, they got little stoppers in every single one of the ports. So here we have two ports. These are the non-POE ports, uh, basically what would be your uplink and downlink ports. Uh, right here on the side of the switch. And then these eight ports across the front are your 802.3 AF, AT, and BT uh, PoE. Boy, and they all have a little label that says, uh, you know, power plus plus on every single one of these. So this is model number uh, USW-Industrial. There's not gonna be a ton of use cases for this switch, right? But when you need a switch like this, it's good that it's around, right? So for instance, if you had, there, there aren't a lot of 802.3 BT devices that Ubiquity makes. Um, so the USW Flex, which I have here somewhere. Yeah, so this guy. So the USW Flex is a switch that can take 802.3 BT power in, and then it can output 802.3 AF or AT across all of these other ports. So if you guys remember the video that I did on this uh, USW Flex switch, uh, this is made to go outdoors and I was having trouble powering devices with this thing because I was only using 802.3 AT. I was not using 802.3 BT and so I could only power like one G4 camera with it. But if you wanted to power, say two of the G4 Pro cameras on a pole, you would need this fed by 802.3 BT power. So you get all 60 watts into this guy and then you can power a bunch of devices off of the ports on the uh, USW here, the USW Flex. All right, so we'll put that off to the side here. So with this switch, you can, oh man, this is heavy. With this switch, you can also power the Unify Base Station XG, which is sort of that flat panel access point that's made for like stadiums. Right, so imagine that you were going to do a stadium and you had like four or five of those base station XGs sort of pointing at different areas of the crowd. You could use one of these to power up all of those. So basically put this up in the rafters somewhere and then power all of those base station XGs. This also works with the Unify XG access point, which is like the big daddy sort of standard form factor Unify access point. On top of that though, this will auto sense 802.3 AF, AT or BT. So you can power a ton of the AT devices off of this too. So that's like the LED panels, uh, the G4 Pro cameras, the in-wall HD access point, uh, as well as the HD access point and the EDU access point. All of those can easily be powered by this thing. Uh, in fact, you could have all eight ports populated and still power those devices. Now, this is not cheap, okay? So the MSRP on this guy is $499, right? So basically 500 bucks. Amazon right now has it for $506.15. There's a link down below if you wanna check it out. Again, this is not something that you're gonna use for a normal network installation. This has a very specific use case. 
Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of places where I would even have been able to use this in uh, use this in the projects that we've deployed. Uh, though we are very fond of the Netonix switches, if you guys know what those are, and those are sort of a ruggedized switch that we use in a lot of our outdoor like wireless ISP deployments. Um, you could certainly use this in place of those ruggedized switches as well. So this switch is completely fanless. Uh, it is plenum rated. It can be installed uh, horizontal or vertical in a wall, right? So anywhere that you would be have to run plenum cable, you can also have this switch. Uh, it's a die cast aluminum enclosure. And I'm telling you, this thing is easily like 10 pounds. Maybe it's eight pounds. I don't know. Let me look at, maybe it's on the data sheet. All right, so I was close. It's eight and a half pounds. It's uh, about, what the heck? All right, so I was pretty close. It's eight and a half pounds. It's 3.85 kilograms. So almost four kilograms, eight and a half pounds. This thing is really, really hefty. And that's because of the die cast aluminum case, which has also been powder coated in this black color to help prevent corrosion, right? So this is a switch that you want to set and forget, right? If you want to put this up again in a wall, in the rafters, you know, in your attic, somewhere where you're basically not gonna be able to get to it for very long. This is the type of industrial switch that you would want to use in those types of deployments. If you guys have other deployments where you could have used a switch like this, I'd love to hear about them. Put those down in the comments below so that I can check those out. The operating temperature on this thing is minus 40 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is minus 40 to 122 degrees Fahrenheit if you're powering it with 450 watts. That's full power. Now, if you cut that down to 240 watt power, the operating temperature actually goes up to minus 40 to 60 degrees Celsius, which is minus 40 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so I am going to plug this in and then let's go ahead and get it adopted to Unify. I don't see the standard like Unify LED, uh, although there is a little Unify U right here. So I'm guessing that that's probably the LED, uh, but let's plug it in and find out. Yeah, this thing is hefty. Oh, look at that. There's the LED. So there is an LED. It is actually, oh, that was hard to see, but it's actually sort of surrounding that, uh, that little U logo. So here you can see the square LED right there. And uh, I'm telling you, it's times like this that I am very, very glad that I put a second circuit in my office because I've got so many <laughs> electronics running in here. It's nice when I have to power up a switch like this that I can actually uh, have a dedicated circuit for this kind of stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out one of the uplink ports and let's get this plugged into another switch that I have sitting here. Okay, so we have a solid white LED. That means that this switch is ready to be adopted into Unify. I'm gonna go ahead and adopt it into Unify now. Uh, it's basically gonna be the same adoption process as any other device. Uh, so yeah, I see switch industrial. In fact, let me record this. Here we can see Switch Industrial 8 PoE 450 Watt is pending adoption. Let's go ahead and click on it and adopt this device, adopt. And then once that's done adopting, I will take a look in Unify and see if there's anything special about this switch in terms of settings or features. There probably won't be. I think the draw for this switch or the features of this switch have to do with the form factor, the case, the fanless design, uh, the corrosion resistance, the temperature resistance, etc. cetera. Uh, I think that has more to do with it than the actual, um, you know, ports themselves, other than the fact that they can power the 802.3BT uh, PoE++ devices. Okay, so we're gonna wait for this thing to finish provisioning, which it's provisioning now. And uh, then I will come right back and let you know if there's anything unique about this switch in Unify. So I checked Unify, there is nothing special about this switch in Unify other than the fact that it shows that it has PoE++ capability. So I'm not gonna show you any Unify stuff, but I wanted to prove a point here. So I have one cable coming out of the USW Industrial going into the USW Flex, and then with this one output of the USW Industrial, I'm powering the Flex, a G4 Pro camera, a Cloud Key Gen 2, a, an in-wall HD access point, and a UAP HD access point. All of these are powered on and working just fine. Uh, when I was powering this with 802.3 AT, 
Uh, I would put like three devices in and like the third device would just start rebooting over and over and over because it didn't have enough power to get all of those devices powered up. So that is one port off of the industrial powering all of these devices and it's working perfectly. So yeah, this thing is a beast. I'm really curious though what you guys think about it and uh, where you think this fits into a network infrastructure. Temperature wise, by the way, powering all these devices, it's like not even warm to the touch. It's actually cool to the touch. Uh, so this thing is not even breaking a sweat, so to speak. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about the Unify Switch Industrial, where it has a place, where would you use it, right? So I'm curious about all the different sort of use cases for this type of switch. I wanna hear about those, put those in the comments below. And if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the USW Industrial, put those in the comments below as well. I will try to get them answered. And yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know where I would use this switch. <laughs> I mean, but, oh geez, it is just such a beast. I absolutely love it. <laughs> I don't know where I'd use it, but I absolutely love it. All right, you guys, uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Like, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. We'll see you in the next one.